In our last episode, we talked about how ultra processed foods can cause weight gain by driving increased calorie intake. And in this episode, we'll talk about one of the specific mechanisms that may be involved, and that is the ratio of macronutrients, or specifically the ratio of fats and carbohydrates. Today, over half the calories consumed in the US are from ultra processed foods. Now, ultra processed foods include foods that are obviously junk, but also include those that are marketed as healthy, but are effectively disguised junk food. These foods stimulate increased calorie intake through some well-known mechanisms like the addition of sugar and salt and through texture engineering, but they also stimulate increased calorie intake through some lesser known mechanisms. In 2019, one of those possible mechanisms came to light through a research study led by John Speakman, which showed that the ratio of macronutrients can alter food intake. The scientists wanted to know how different ratios of nutrients could affect food intake and body composition, and so they exposed over a thousand lab mice to 29 different diets while they varied the levels of protein, carbohydrates, and fats. Now we might have expected that the mice would gain the most weight and eat the most at the most extreme ends of the carbohydrate and fat spectrum. For example, we might have expected to see the most weight gain with either extremely high carbohydrate percentage or extremely high fat percentage. But that's not what happened. The scientists found that when they held protein at a constant level, the mice ate the most and gained the most weight at a fat to carbohydrate ratio of about one to one, or specifically the weight gain of the mice peaked at a fat to carbohydrate ratio of about 50 to 60%. That was contrary to the expectations of many, and in fact the scientists showed that the mice didn't gain significant amounts of weight or accumulate significant amounts of fat with a very high percentage of carbohydrate compared to fat in the diet. Now this roughly one-to-one -one mix of fats and carbohydrates is remarkably similar to what we find in ultra-processed foods, which may be one reason why they're so extremely easy to overeat. Now in this study, the scientists also wanted to know how different diet compositions affected the neurobiology of the animals. They found that higher dietary fat was related to increased expression of genes involved in reward pathways, specifically dopamine and opioid receptors. Now this is in line with data showing that the mix of carbohydrates and fats can produce exceptionally strong reward signals even in humans. And this occurs in the part of the brain called the striatum, which is a primary center for dopamine and reward signaling. Now interestingly, they also found that higher dietary fat was related to downregulation of genes associated with hunger in the hypothalamus, for example, NPY, and increased expression of genes involved in the serotonin pathways, which have been associated with inhibition of food intake. So at the same time, higher dietary fat was associated with both increased reward signaling and decreased hunger signaling. One way to interpret this is that the appetite centers were effectively putting the brakes on food intake in order to offset the signaling from the reward pathways. If you want to know more about how the brain regulates appetite and food intake, I'll link to episode 4 in the description. Now what can we take away from this study? This study suggests that a roughly 1 to 1 mix of carbohydrates and fats probably stimulates more calorie intake, possibly through reward signaling, although the exact mechanisms need to be worked out. We also know that many of the foods that we're surrounded with today have this type of mix of fats and carbohydrates, and that doesn't make them bad, but it does help us to understand the impact that they may have on us. Now it's important to remember that this was just one study, it still needs to be replicated, and was also in mice and not people, so we'll need more human data to be able to verify these findings. It's also worth mentioning that the carbohydrate content was never low enough to drive the mice into ketosis, which could theoretically change the outcomes. It's also important to note that it wasn't feasible in this study to investigate different types of fatty acids, like long-chain saturated fatty acids versus monounsaturated versus polyunsaturated fatty acids, which could, at least in theory, change outcomes. Thank you so much for listening. If you want to support this channel, the very best way to do that is to hit the subscribe button and the like button. Please share these videos with your friends. Head over to nicksterling.com where you can find the sign up for the newsletter. You can find me on all the major platforms with the ID Sterling MD PhD. Thanks so much for listening, and we'll see you next time.